As you can see from the title, this is the first episode of my mini lecture series on 20th and 21st century composers. Everyone thinks of Bach, Mozart, and Beethoven when they hear the term classical music. True, they were all music masters from centuries ago, but what we're ignoring is music written much more recently. I think it's such a pity that classical music is being treated more and more like museum antiques, while many wonderful works that show modern spirit and uh, innovation surely deserve more attention. So that is why I'm launching this series to discover more recent composers and music. In this first episode, I want to introduce a very short but extremely interesting piano solo piece, The Tides of Manonoan by American composer Henry Cowell. It premiered in 1917. To talk about this piece, it's unavoidable to discuss an unusual piano technique called the tone cluster, because The Tides of Manonoan is filled with tone clusters. Cowell was a creative person and tone cluster was one of his many musical innovations. So what is a tone cluster? It's a group of adjacent notes. For example, this is a simple tone cluster, C, B, E, or we can have a slightly wider tone cluster, C, D, E, F, G, all played at the same time. So in these small tone clusters, you could just play regularly with your fingers, but Kao's ambition went much beyond that. The smallest tone clusters in the Tides of Manonoan are used at the beginning and the very end. These are an octave plus all the notes in between the octave. Since we only have five fingers on one hand and can't possibly hit all the notes at once, we have to use our palm to play the cluster like this. And the bigger surprise is in the middle of the piece with tone clusters that expand over two octaves in which case the palm is not enough and we have to use our entire forearm to play. So how do we know which exact notes to play? It would be painful to write down all of these notes in the score, so Kao developed different symbols for different types of clusters. This symbol means playing the two notes and all the chromatic notes in between. This one with a sharp means to play the two plus all the black notes in between and with a natural sign, it means to play the two notes and all the white keys in between. It was never clear how Kao began using the tone clusters. He actually gave several different accounts on the origin of tone clusters throughout his life. However, he did explain quite clearly in his book, New Musical Resources, some of his ideas on this technique he saw a resemblance between tone clusters and the more common quarto system based on intervals of thirds. He demonstrated in the book the possibility of building basic major, minor, augmented, and diminished chords consisting of second intervals instead of thirds. So to give an example, we have a major triad, C, E, G, where we have third interval at the bottom and E to G, a minor third interval on top. To apply this structure to a major tone cluster, we can use C to D, major second at the bottom and D to E flat, minor second on top. And one more example, so for minor triad C, E flat, G, we have minor third interval at the bottom and major third interval on top. And then for a minor tone cluster, we use a minor second interval at the bottom and a major second interval on top. And the same thing goes for augmented and diminished tone clusters. But so far, all you've heard in my demonstration was probably just meaningless noise. How then did Kao make the tone clusters musically effective? In his book, Kao says that a running part in clusters may be effective in connection with chords in other systems. He also thinks that in harmony, it is often better for the sake of consistency to maintain a whole succession of clusters once they are begun, since one alone or even two may be heard as a mere effect rather than as an independent and significant procedure carried with musical logic 
to its inevitable conclusion. And these are precisely what he did in the Tides of Menonon, which has left-hand clusters running throughout the piece, with more common diatonic chords on the right hand. The Tides of Menonon was written for a play called The Building of Bamba, and is a musical depiction of an Irish myth according to Kao's friend, John Varian. At the beginning of the score, there is a beautiful inscription and that describes the story. It says, quote, Manunwan was the god of motion, and long before the creation, he sent forth tremendous tides, which swept to and fro through the universe, and rhythmically moved the particles and materials of which the gods were later to make the songs and worlds. End quote. So given this atmosphere, I think that the use of tone clusters in this piece is really quite ingenious, as you will soon hear, because compared to playing with only your fingers, the use of palm and forearm much more efficiently create the effect of the kind of tides or force strong enough to shake the earth.